Hello and welcome to another segment as we look at the evolution of fashion in Nigeria. I'm Elsie Godwin and as usual I've got Ewa Oritu and Ifeolu Oshunke. Hey guys. Good. How you doing? Still on the matter, the independence matter. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here in the studio to discuss um, Nigeria's fashion industry with us, the Nigerian fashion designer, Ejiro Imostafari. She is the originator of Ejiro Imostafari brand, um, which was launched to meet the um, fashion needs of modern women. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. Thank you for joining. Thank you for having me. No drum rolls. <laughs> we that. All right, we always do the drum rolls. Thank All right, you. before we get into this conversation proper, we had a chat with the CEO of House of Bruno, Frank Oshodi, earlier, and he spoke on what was obtainable at the time he launched his fashion business. Have a look. It was in 1991, I guess. Um, you know, first, I started off as a model, so um, from modeling, I just went into fashion designing. And um, that time, we had designers like. Um, Princess International, Fragilio's wife, who owned the Princess International. You have um, Bobogi in the Keja. We have um, um, Auntie Abba for La Rio. And then we have Morfechi. And then most of um, these designers then were more into kaftans, boo boos. You know, they made it very trendy. They made them different from what you, you see across other West African countries. Because that was what was happening then. But these designers took it to a different level, but it's still in the caftan, long, short, and you know. And then until um, designers like Rose of Sharon came in, and she, at that time, was looking into using Ashoke to do a whole lot of stuff short dresses, long dresses, wedding dresses, and, you know, make beautiful stuff with um, stuff like that. So, as at the time, I came into fashion. That was was, was obtainable. And you have um, these people working with mostly brocades. Brocade print was not really, print was what everybody was wearing, but it was not what the designers, I think, thought at that time were sophisticated enough for people to wear to events, you know. Uh -huh. So, but then you had laces. Laces were one at Iran, but mostly at that time as well. Uh, but those designers worked mostly with brocade. Brocades were sophisticated, they were sharp, they were glossy, and you know, could stand um, test of time until, you know, this um, Antiaba and uh, Mrs. Fulon Shalakita came in with doing a whole lot with the Ashoke, and uh, other designers started doing Ashoke as well. Then uh, Dakova came in with linen and linen in all textures and more into like western you know his cre his creations were into like jackets and jackets of all sorts and different textures and qualities so these are the things that were really happening at the time i started into fashion so on how far nigeria has come in terms of fashion here is what he had to say but nigeria has come a long way in terms of fashion and i must tell you that in the whole of Africa, Nigeria comes first as far as consumption of fashion is concerned, as far as trend is concerned, as far as consumption of fabrics are concerned, and accessories. Do you understand? I mean, have you got you go to our weddings, traditional and uh, church weddings? We look exceptionally fantastic, even though some of us get it wrong. Yeah, it's also part of it. Because what you consider wrong is right for some people. Do you understand? Everybody have their own personality. So I say Nigerians are exceptional when it comes to fashion. We are the highest consumers of style, fashion, fabric, uh, makeup. You understand what I'm saying? So I think for me, in terms of fashion, in Africa, with respect to how far we have come, from, I mean, the date we, have, uh, we had our independence, I think we have done exceptionally well. I mean, in the, terms, I mean, in the whole of Africa, Nigeria has done well. We have, we've done well. Uh, we're still doing well. All right, and speaking on the influence of westernization on our style and how the industry has evolved, here is what he had to say. 
uh, more um, of tilting to the western side. Um, and I must say that even in China it's the same thing, in India it's the same thing, in America it's the same thing. I mean, over the years fashion has evolved all over the world. Um, what they wear in America today is not what they wore like 60 years ago. You know, the need to make it simpler, more comfortable, and um, for ladies more sexy, more appealing, you understand, and functional, has made fashion to evolve. Hey, welcome back. So do you agree that Nigeria is the most fashionable country in Africa? Oh, absolutely. I think any African will agree with that. Mm. Mm. Yes, I did. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, South Africa comes close, but then Nigerians have a certain panache to them. I mean, I think it's who we are as a people. It's not necessarily like the designers or it's just the people. When a Nigerian shows up somewhere, even the personality mm -hmm. goes before. So when you wear the clothes, you come with all that personality, all that, George the Vive. So there's no way they wouldn't see Nigeria. And we like to consume fashion. We love colors. We're not scared of colors. We're not scared of uh, vavavoon. And the South Africans call Nigerian dressing, dressing, power dressing. So, I mean. Okay, so let's take away the fashionable. Do you think we promote our culture enough? Well enough, I would not, I would say no. <laughs> I would say no. We come, we now, fair enough, I studied fashion in Nigeria. Like that was what I studied in high institution in Yabatek. And I graduated 2007, yeah. So from then it was like a taboo to study fashion, yeah. But now You're people- You're supposed to be a medical doctor. Yes. <laughs> doctor, no, I was doctor. going to be a medical doctor. Science. And I chose fashion. fashion. My parents almost, but it was, it's fine, I'm here now. Mm -hmm. So, but now we now consider fashion as a proper profession in Nigeria it's cool to have a child studying fashion it's now cool to have a child and say my child is a designer oh he studied medicine but now it's a designer owns that nice fashion house I mean it's now something of note to do but do we consume African culture I would say not well enough like um, the flamboyance of our culture is transcends to how we dress mm. uh, but not the culture per se, maybe even the fabrics. Like I try as much as possible to use Nigerian fabrics. I mean, not just prints, because print is not African fabric. Mm -hmm. It's not. The Ankara we all call African fabric is that we are the highest, con we are the consumers of Africa of that, and even lace. Lace originated from places like, um, it's from Swiss and places like that. They make those fabrics, they will go and buy them and bring them. Yeah, That's this one is from Swiss, Swiss, Swiss lace. Like yeah, the best. <laughs> you get. And then, Print is from Holland. It's from Holland. It's uh, Velisco. Velisco mm -hmm. is from Holland. So these are not our traditional fabrics. So because we have become the main consumers of this okay. fabric, is now like African fabric. Stuff that's inherently ours is Asheo King, um, Akwete, woven fabrics. And then mm. when we now do tie-dye on maybe plain cotton fabric, like the way they would do it in maybe Oyo, Isengi, uh, um, Abel Kuta, with our own motifs, because you know tie-dye is all around the world. Yeah. Mm. So when you tell your stories with your motifs, things that make sense in your, in your language or like in your villa, mm. then that's your fabric. So it would be nice for us to use more of our language, our signing, you know, to write our motifs, to create our designs. And the good thing with even the other fabrics that we now call as like the village and stuff, the designers come here to draw inspiration. So that's why when you see the fabrics, it makes sense to you. They draw mm. motifs of stuff they see when they come to Africa. So it then makes sense that so you can connect to you. So it would be nice when we do more of that, our uh, woven fabrics, our tie and dye. Do you think we'll ever get yeah, to that point? Yeah, because I was going to say, we'll um, do more I, of I that. appreciate the clarity that she's um, putting out there now that mm -hmm. look, the lace is not even, because I'm always like, I'm always of the opinion that why do we still import Ankara um, lace, mm -hmm. you know, and things like that? Shouldn't it be the other way around? But we should have done that by now, because like China, and co China is like a production center for the whole world. China produces Ankara and lace and all of that now. And we even mm -hmm. go there to buy as well. And Nigeria, back when we were growing up, or before we were even born, we had a lot of mills mm -hmm. and textile fab factories. And they are all still there and shut down. 
Mm. Except that they are now trying to change the laws and say, okay, they want to revive. Um, Vinsco is coming to set up like five factories in Nigeria and stuff. But we had stuff like Uniwax, Suntex, all of them. They, all of Isolo Road, they, it was like an industrial hub for textiles. In the north, you have several of them shut down. The cotton was like oil back in these in the 60s and mm. the 50s. Mm. But we just let all of that go to smokes when we found oil. So mm. it would be nice if we could rediscover that. And that provides jobs across all the other fields, from the farmers to the cotton pickers to the spinners to the... So we don't even produce our own thread mm. when we have cotton. Wow. Uh. So it's as bad as that. So as much as style-wise, Nigerians have involved, but I think we've regressed but, um, economically as what fashion could have done or brought to the table in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. Is there a body that guides um, fashion designers in Nigeria? Because I think this is not something that, we, like we agreed this morning, we can't wait for the government for Nollywood and the music scene. Do you think that if there's a body and you guys come together, you can bring back those, mm. um, what's it called, factories, and then we we'll start producing? Well, there are several bodies, funny enough, and they are, some of them are as old as Nigeria. Yes, not an active member anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Not an active member anymore. It's just too much politics. You know, everything then becomes all about. Mm. If it's not about fashion, then I'm not really. If it's not about the business, then <laughs> let's make mm. better use of our time. But then we have those bodies, and they are working, and they have been working for years. The only thing is, we we don't have enough fashion education in Nigeria. Mm. Mm. So a lot of people practicing fashion are not professionally trained. Mm -hmm. They figure it out as they go. As they go. And so they bastardize the profession, and they can't be bothered about the ethics of the trade and sustainability of it. Only those who are into it for the right reasons. And funny enough, a lot of people get in fashion, a lot of people to be popular, then some people just to make money. So when mm -hmm. you just do that was the only job we for. <coughs> yeah. So okay, it's from, to be popular, from make what money. you said, so now, ethics goes to smoke. Sustainability goes to smoke. Everything you need to get this business running mm. is imported. Yes. Almost or everything. My sister, everything. So everything. how 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 do you everything. cope? How does the business run? How does it function? You, you how you rely on the importers? Okay. Basically. So if the federal government wakes up tomorrow to put uh, ban effects on, it will those, be amazing. But they, the federal government will have to have done other things like okay, make sure the factories are working, make sure there are cotton farms that are healthy and producing cotton and spinning mm -hmm. and producing, and then we are spinning them in threads from there. We're weaving fabric and then. Yeah, then shut down the. I'm all for shut down the borders. <laughs> Keep it. They, they let us die here. Mm. Make it. Uh, <laughs> yes. So would you say it affects the cost of um, production also oh, in terms of prices? Because sometimes when I want to buy a made in Nigeria, exactly. Ankara, it's it's I'm like okay, uh -uh. No, you know. Let me put it this way too. Mm -hmm. The Nigerian fashion entrepreneur has to do everything for themselves. School. We don't have enough fashion training schools, mm. um, so they go to these expensive. Um, uh, uh, schools, uh, private schools, mm -hmm. they don't get a full, wholesome education. They start figuring out everything that they, by themselves. Okay, you set up, you pay your rent, you don't get as much support. There is support now, because I did get government grants, and if you know the right places to look, British Council supports mm -hmm. a lot. Some governments, like Lagos State has this LS, LS, Lagos State Support entrepreneurship some something fund okay. so they train tailors and um, pattern cutters so there's some support you just have to know the right places to look so they go through all of these phases and then buy your own generator you run your own machine you figure it out <laughs> so by the time you're putting a price on this clothes all this stuff ahead about yeah. everything. you just put it right back there customer come and pay but then if you had production hubs for example designers are not not like if you don't buy ready to wear we don't all have to have small cottage factories and say I'm a designer and I'm producing my clothes myself. Mm. If you had enough production hubs, like you can just go to production hub, run your designs, you produce it, you focus on marketing, like your marketing campaign and pushing out your designs. So that way you take off a lot of the overhead, you take off a lot of the stress and then the quality of the product is higher and then the cost comes lower. If we could do that, other African countries are doing that and they're not even close to being fashionable yeah. at all. Mauritius, Egypt, Tanzania. They all have production lesser hubs, population. and they even produce clothes for people abroad. Mm. Mm. They're making clothes and supplying Gucci, all of them. They're making clothes with them. Let's move to the runway. Sorry, got going. Shoot. Okay, so I was going to <laughs> ask. Fashion is being recycled. Mm -hmm. What fashion trend do you think would never go away? Like it would just keep coming back over and over. LBD again. never goes away. The little black dress, mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. never, ever, ever goes away. Like it's just perfect. 
it's just it's just there like the little bag you want to go out like if you don't have anything in your wardrobe every woman wants to have at least one nice black dress, black dress that fits well shows legs shows okay, skin in the right places what african trend you roll and booba, it's not going anywhere. Mm. Yeah, yeah, that's why I kind of put it. I think the fight is to call it, call it own. Excuse me, it was an elevation. Yeah, I remember. Yes, it was. Yes, it was. So, you like Oleku. Oleku has been there. Oleku like has evolved over time. Like Oleku is was a term used like in the sixties for shorts, roll booba, like tight. And into Mbasi even brought it back in Ankara where she did mix it. But when I did the Oleku drape dress, I just thought, okay, I want to make this rumba that we wear into a dress that anybody around the world could put it on and just think I'm wearing a dress. But to me, I've sold you my culture and you're wearing, you're wearing it and you're happy and you're feeling mm. cool. And then why does it always have to be in heaven? Okay, I, had, I was fresh out of fashion, I call it, not university, polytechnic, but for the sake of it, university, fresh off trying to start my business, you know, I didn't have a car, jumping or cars, whatever. So the tradition, and I loved Ramba growing up, like all my pictures of my dad, my dad, I wear the remaining piece of his barbariga and he'll make Ramba. Yeah. So I always, I was the only girl, so it was always cool to just dress up with dad and go to church. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> secondary school, I was still trying, you know, when I come from Kisi on holidays. But when I was in Yabatek, I don't think I wore in Ramba once. So by the time I graduated, I'm like, is this how I'm just going to lose this thing that I've loved wearing growing up? And I said, no. So I started researching, what can I do? I liked wearing um, light fabrics, chiffons. I love drapery. That was my major in school. I wanted to just keep researching. I said, okay, let me put it in chiffon. Okay, when I make it in the chiffon, how would they wear it that it will not, if I want to confuse them, I'm just wearing a dress. Don't be thinking I'm wearing a mm -hmm. So I now, I was just playing in my office one day and I came up with how to drape tight. I said, okay, let me make it a dress, make it a mm -hmm. dress. Added some rubbish zippers and lining. So I tried to sell that thing for three months. Nobody bought one. So I now said, mm -hmm. okay, maybe I overthought this thing. So first of all, I took out the lining. You remember, it doesn't come with lining. Mm -hmm. We wear slips. Women have it ingrained in their head that they wear a slip under mm -hmm. it. So separate it, take the slip and keep it separate and keep the dress separate. Okay, reduce the joining. Let them have to tie it a bit by mm. themselves. You know, but that's part of the drama of mm -hmm. wearing remember. So I made it joined only at the back, then you have to figure out the rest and then boom, went to the fashion week and before the show, so people say oh, dream plenty and then that's how it became viral. That's very interesting. All right, so since you talk, are you? No, no. All right, let's move to runway. Because, yes. Because um, I think that is one area that we're seriously lagging behind in Nigeria. Really? Yeah, sure. Um, the reason I'm going to say that is because we have a lot of um, fashion festivals abroad yeah. and then you see a lot of runway shows. But mm -hmm. we are limited, you, unless you hear about the... Uh, Bank Fashion Weekend, mm -hmm. this Fashion Weekend, this Fashion Weekend. And then when you finally get to see, because I've been privileged to uh, attend. attend a few of these, you see that the designs they are putting out there are more of the Western style themed clothes, okay. like um, Uncle Frank, which he said. Um, do you think it That's should be should that be way? Is that what we should be doing or on the mm -hmm. runway? We should rock our Oliku and all of that. Okay. Now, this is where I'm going to sound very controversial because I'm on all those platforms you're talking about. Mm -hmm. But on the sidelines, I'm constantly saying, I think as Nigerian designers, especially the, the top Nigerian designers, you know, with the need to be bougie, mm. we are catering so much to the West. Like, mm. we're so concerned about how the West will see us, how they, what they would like to see in our clothes. We forget about our own culture and maybe what should be inspiring it. But there are different cult, um, fashion weeks, so I guess, each fashion week has to have its own identity and what they cater to and what they like because whoever pays the pi piper dictates the tune. The tune. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, so I guess that's what you're getting to see. But there are other fashion weeks like Africa Fashion Week mm -hmm. Nigeria and they promote the other kind of looks you're talking about. Yeah. There, 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 there are several other fashion weeks like that and there was the one by Lexi Mojo Eyes. I can't remember the name of the fashion week now. So there are other platforms, but like the biggest ones, the big one. promote and then the top Nigerian. It's what, you, it's what we clap for now. Nigerians like the West. <laughs> so it's what we celebrate. It's what we want to see. Once you are bougie, that's what yeah. you'll be clamoring for. Yeah. Uh -huh. if, you cl if people like honored the traditional designer more, mm -hmm. everybody, people will aspire to that. So it's only a cautious effort for those who really want to say, I am Nigerian and I believe that what is Nigerian is global. We are not second class citizens, we are 
citizens, like every other person in the world. They are the ones that will keep pushing their African story forward. Mm. The Nigerian designers, even the bougie ones, still try. I mean, in their clothes, even when you say it caters to the West, you see that for me, every collection must have something like a Dan Shiki. It must have something like an Uro Ambaba. Mm. It just might not look basic to you, and that's where designing comes in. I can't just give it back to you just the way yeah. it mm -hmm. is. I have to explore new materials, explore new, new, new exactly. lens, new proportions, new stuff. So a lot of designers have that. People like, um, what's the guy's name? I can't remember. People have stuff like that, where they try to make suits that look like danshikis and stuff. So you see them there. It's just maybe the presentation is not this. It, it shouldn't even be so basic. Mm. So even when you look at America, they have their tradition. You see influences, you see boho, bohemian look. It comes from like the indie, American Indians, traditional lifestyle. <coughs> and then you have that bohemian look. But it's not then, uh, like direct, the way they wear mm. traditionally. That's the way you transfer it. Right. So, so my next question to has to be to something. We don't wait till Friday to wear <laughs> <laughs> uh, that she keeps to work on Monday yeah. in Nigeria now. Uh, yeah. So it's yeah. something I picked from social media, right? Mm. And when you see someone who they would say expose their body parts, mm -hmm. um, the conversation starts and someone will say you're indecent and the next person will say, but when you look at the way we used to dress in those days, yeah, show ignorance. our body and all that. So what would you say is the proper Nigerian culture dressing? Is it very conservative or what, what is it like? Okay, I, my parents will see this. <laughs> I'm still a child of God, I'm still a Christian, but mm. let's be honest here. The traditional African dressing, like Africans don't wear clothes because of our weather. Mm -hmm. We are in the tropics, so we know, like the traditional African dressing is to wear no clothes. And those who wore blankets were closer to the te temperate, like towards South Africa, you know, the Kenya, they have this blanket they wear and tie. But go back, go back, go back. They just wear one thing on the wrapper down here. If you go to the village, village, village thing now, some my grandmas will just tie it and leave mm. everything here open. Nobody sees it as indecent. So, mm. And then they have maiden dances where people just wear beads on their hips and then they come out and they're gyrating and everything. That is traditional African. I mean, they still have that in South Africa, right? Yeah. And, do and, the and even doctors and mm -hmm. co will wear it and come out and nobody. Yeah, traditional African dressing is the most sexy, indecent, <laughs> if you want to use <laughs> that word. That's true. Okay. Okay. They taught yeah. us to wear clothes because yeah. they were wearing clothes where they were coming from. Mm. Mm. I wish you could continue, but I'm so sorry. Our time is on. Okay. Thank you so much, Andrew, for being You're here. Welcome. This was a very enlightening conversation on the Nigerian and, um, fashion industry. Thank you. Thank you. And of course, um, this is Plus TV Africa, and this is a special broadcast looking at every sector in the economy as we mark Nigeria as 59. Thank you for watching. My name is Elsie Godwin.